and welcome to this new video. Today I want to talk about the use of colour in photography by showing you an example that I think wonderfully shows how powerful colour is as a photographic tool. However, if you've been a long time viewer of this channel, you might recognise that this video is a re-upload. I've got some busy times going on right now outside of this channel, so at the moment I'm in Vienna because I've got a film shoot for uni, and then after this shoot I'm going to head back to Salzburg just to pack my stuff and then come back here because Meli and I are actually moving to Vienna into this apartment. But then only a two, I think one two weeks later I'm going to go back to Salzburg because I've got my final exam for uni to hopefully then graduate with a Bachelor's of Arts I think. Anyway, all that means is just that the next couple of weeks might be a little tough and I'm not quite sure if I'm going to be able to produce my videos on a weekly basis as I usually do, and so instead I might decide to do a re-upload like today. And I just wanted to let you know what's going on behind the scenes, but the video I chose I still think is really cool and definitely worth a re-watch if you've seen it before, but of course I hope you haven't seen it yet. And yeah, enjoy! I think photography can be broken down into many layers of photography which as a whole create the photograph. These can be for example the composition, the subject, the lighting or the colours. Colour is one of the layers you can add or relinquish in photography. Subtracting this layer from photography reduces the layers of the photograph to something much more abstract than the reality we perceive. At least I guess most of us see the world in colour. So in a way adding colour brings your photograph closer to reality, however not always. Adding colour in general is all very well, but what happens to realism when colour is not only added, but also carefully picked or possibly edited? This may result in an enhanced version of reality, or maybe a narrowed version, or even in surrealism, something quite far from reality. I've been following and admiring the work of a certain visual artist since more than a year I think who creatively plays with the colours and defines his style in my point of view through his unique use of colour. In this video, I want to share some of my thoughts on the use of colour in photography and introduce the artist Alm Fair to you, whose unique use of colour I was referring to. So let me elaborate on the use of colour in photography as far as I've reflected this topic and collected my thoughts. Colour is used in many different ways and varying levels of intentionality. Many photographs simply have colours. The picture is not a black and white, but the colours in the photo don't really add much value apart from maybe adding the layer of realism. Then there's the photographs with strong colours, which may underline the feeling that it is trying to evoke in the viewer. This can then be narrowed down to photographs that only have a few intentionally chosen strong colours. This is then a stylistic choice to draw attention to the colours or the subject. We can go in further detail by dividing this category in types of colour palettes that were chosen. Is the palette complementary, monochrome, warm, cold or something else? I'm sure there are plenty more detailed categories we could think of, but I think with the few I listed you got the point of how many different uses colour offers. Apart from the visual uses, colour can of course have a conceptual meaning. This brings me to colour psychology. As you might know, or definitely can relate to, colours have different connotations which can give a photograph a deeper meaning if chosen well. For example, the colour red can stand for warmth, strength or aggression. Green can represent harmony, refreshment or balance. When I look at my photography, I would not claim that it directly makes use of colour psychology, but I think it's an interesting construct to keep in mind when I have the possibility to carefully choose the colours in my photograph. As one can easily recognise when viewing my photography, I feel a strong pull towards colours and applying them in my photography. I have to admit though, when I control my colours, such as in editing, I do so rather intuitively and simply go for an aesthetic I've envisioned. I haven't thought too much about conceptual ways of establishing colour in my photography, but I'm definitely interested to try that. Someone who I think does put a higher amount of thought into the choice and use of colour is Almefer. I've been following him on Instagram since a good while and have gotten a decent grasp of his style and what makes his art special for me. So I thought if I want to make a video about colour, it better feature his work, so let me introduce you to the surrealistically colourful art world of Almefer. Almefer is a visual artist from Spain. I purposely don't call him a photographer because the mediums he uses to create his art go beyond photography I believe. If we take a look at his series Misuse of Violence, I think we can agree that this is not photography but 3D art. On Behance this photo is tagged as CGI. What makes him stand out for me is his use of colour, especially in his photographic work. This is a series by Almefer called Deserts of the Future. 
On Behance, this project has the subtitle Documenting Desertification on Earth and Beyond. In the description, he writes about the effects of climate change and how our not-so-bright future concerns him. The photographs are a collection of landscape photographs of deserts. Each photo includes the moon shining on top of the land, except for one photograph which even features two moons. This already is where his sense of surrealism comes into play. A common theme across the series are the colors he chooses. He mostly goes for a very warm, if not hot, look. He seems to have shifted the orange hues of many photographs towards red. This has an intriguing effect for me because I think it fits the photos so well and adds this feeling of pain and suffering of the pictured nature. The mix of orange and red hues remind me of heat, fire and blood. I find this choice to be super effective in the context he has given that this series documents the desertification due to climate change, which can be metaphorically told by the bleeding and suffering of nature. Something I'm not entirely sure about yet is the role of the moon in his photographs. In his description, I'm Affair only mentions the moon briefly. A dim light of strange hues opened my heavy eyes with reflections of the moons that coloured alien skies. My free interpretation is that the moon gives this scene a bit of surrealism and creates this distance between what we see here and the reality of our world until we think about it, and reality hits us quite hard because in many places around the world we are already at this stage. Maybe the moon serves as a point of contrast to give us hope, only to make his art hit us harder. I want to show you one more series by Alma Fair, it's called Phantoms of the Brain. In his description he writes about some findings by the anatomist Wilhelm Hiz, who explains that the brain is like a tree because of the neurons which extend like branches of a tree. Alma Fair makes use of this visual metaphor and creates this photography series of trees in turbulent weather conditions surrounded by fog and light rays to illustrate a mind sickened by obsessions, anxiety, depression and despair. When we look at the photography he created around this theme, I think we can feel the states of mind he portrays. The mind is unclear, cluttered, the light rays represent flashes of mental pain in this mind, which appear sporadically. The minds that are shown are in various states and are confronted with differing strains represented by the colour of the fog that hazes up the mind. The colours of the light rays possibly represent the various types of painful appearances in the mind. What I think Alma Fair masterfully achieves in this series is transporting the feelings he's trying to visually describe. His method of using the trees as the subject, which are lost in a state of obscurity and exposed to these hits of painful strains represented by light rays is dauntingly effective on me. So what can we learn about the use of colour by Alma Fair's work? I can only speak for myself here, but I've learned a lot about the possibility of metaphorical use of colour and the abandonment of realism for the colour. I would not describe my own work as especially realistic in any way, but the surrealism in Alma Fair's art goes far beyond mine and I find it exciting to see how he elevates the meaning of his photography by relinquishing the realism in favour of the metaphorical uses of the colours. His colours represent something. In the first series we observed the reds representing the bleeding and suffering of nature. In the second series the colours represent the types of mental strains, at least in my interpretation. Speaking of interpretation, I hereby just quickly want to remind you that the interpretations of the art in this video were all free interpretations by me, so it is very well possible that you perceive the art in a completely different way and that I'm a fair didn't intend the art to be interpreted the way I did. But that's all the fun about this, I think. So if you have any thoughts or interpretations, please feel encouraged to share those in the comments for me and the community to read. Anyway, I think that's enough for this week. I hope I could send over some inspiration to you by showing you the amazing art by Alma Fair. If you enjoyed the episode, please leave a like. It helps me and my channel out to keep growing. Consider subscribing if you haven't yet. And I'll hopefully see you again next week in the next video. Until then, goodbye.